Hello everybody, this is Gene Star 134 with my first ever movie review. As you can see, this is Snow White and the Huntsman. Now, the cast is kind of choppy at this. There's only four people that are truly identified as the main cast of the movie, so I will be focusing on what they have done and how they have acted, as well as what the movie is, in my opinion, seemed like. First, we are starting off with Kristen Stewart, followed off by Chris Hemsworth. Next is Charlize Theron. Forgive me if I say the name wrong. I hope I did say it right, hopefully. And Sam Claffin. My initial take of the movie is this. Need I say more? When I heard this movie was coming out, especially when it was based off of when I was a child, I, I downright was beyond words. It really got to me, and I have to say that I, I was beyond reason. I was like, who came up with this idea? Are they really trying to make money on something that I lived as a child? And yes, it is a kid's movie. Snow White... And The Seven Dwarfs was a kid's movie. Now, this would be a different if it was a sequel, but it's a remake. Are you serious? The picture says nothing more than what I have to say. Pretty much a live-action remake, and usually there have been exceptions to the rule, but very little have honestly broken that mold and made something terrific. And that's why my initial reaction was this. So, what I will be breaking on is to the actors now. I will be going on to, first, Chris Hemsworth. Also known as, famously right now, Thor. Now, he is a great actor. I have to say that. He is a very good actor. He is very good at showing emotions. He is very good w with body movements. And just overall, conveying the emotion that he needs to convey. Problem is, in this movie, he uses the same voice. Now, this is a very small nitpick, coming from the fact that he held this movie very well. He kept it together. He played the parts needed to play. And he he overall did very, very well, considering this movie was not, at all, in my opinion, a favorite. Not even up there. He wouldn't even be in my... This movie wouldn't even be in my top 50. And trust me, there is a list. So, Chris Hemsworth, yes. I, I'm, I can't really critique him that much, aside from his voice. Now, everyone's going to point to Thor just because that voice is so much like Thor. It's almost exactly the same thing. But keep in mind, at the time, he was playing Thor. Then he comes out with this movie. And this movie is a similar fashion. Thor Thor's voice is very hearty, very robust, just like he has to be for a... Um, Wow, a god um, for a Norse god. There we go. And he plays the same similar part. He has to be a robust huntsman, a very strong, very temperamental, very angry. So I can see the similarities. Now that is, like I said, the only part I can pick at for him. He held the movie. He kept it glued. And that's when I will transition on to Charlay's. From that picture, I need not say more. For those who you know, the current picture is on the left. The past picture was on the right. And the past picture of, it, of her is in one of the most famous movies that I can identify. And that is Monster. Need I say more? This woman put this movie to life. This woman brought it to life. She 
and Crim her sorry her and Crim's Hemsworth without them there would be no movie you can forget about Chris, uh Kristen Stewart without Chris uh without Chris Hemsworth and Charlie's there would be no movie there would be no hunter there would be no queen but I will critique that a little bit later and actually give you detail on what that means. And that's Kristen Stewart right there. Need I say more? A bad Twilight joke that just does not fade away. Now, overall in this movie, she did do some acting. She did barely work well, but I could not get past it. For one, that face that she makes, that out of zone face, that face that questions everything, that makes no sense to me. I can honestly say, if she made any other face, a smiley face, a happy face, a frowning face, even if it was horribly like done, it still would have been better than that. Bland, overlooked, I don't know what the hell I'm doing face. And that's what drove me insane. But enough about Kristen Stewart. I have had my fill of her. I am done with her right now. I will be back to her in a minute or so. So we will go on to the final character, which is Sam, who also played Empires of the Caribbean, Stranger Tides. Which is one of the f only other things he's famous for right now. And I can honestly say if he was given a bigger part or given a different role, I think he would have done terrifically. I saw him in Stranger Tides and he held his part. He did his strength. He worked what he needed to do. He was believable. And all he was there for in the movie was a love interest. And a, a pseudo action companion. And I honestly, it drove me insane again because that's where they played the angle of the whole love triangle. They didn't say it, they didn't insinuate it, but it was there. And that's what made me even more angrier at this movie. And if you're on the side that says, oh, this movie was good, and then you hear. The comparisons that I have to say. Do you honestly think it's good after my points are pointed out? Yes, I will give critiques to the good things in this movie. But right now, there are the breaking points that other people should know about. So we shall go on to how Kristen Stewart act. That's all I have to say. That picture... I didn't even make that meme. That was there on the internet. That was there for everyone to see. That is a general consensus among the public. And yes, it's Bella. But it also says Kristen Stewart. And like I said, I don't want to pick at her for her past transgressions or her past movies. But when you have such a big point towards her, need I say more? There were sub actors in that movie that did better than her. And I will be pointing out one of those sub actors later on. But first let's go back to the Queen. The queen, the queen, the queen, the queen, the queen. That's the only reason this movie was even worth watching. Honestly, this movie could have just been cut up segments where she yelled at people and did things. And I think it would have sold better than the original movie. Just because Charlay's made this movie. She acted her heart out like she did in Monster. In the Italian job. In Hancock. And yes her part was small in Hancock. But know what? She made it. And that's what was the point. It didn't matter how big of an actor you were. It didn't matter how small of an actor you were. She earned this part 
down to the T. She deserved every penny she got from the box office. She put her heart into this movie, and, and I could honestly tell. Without her or Chris Hemsworth, there would be no movie. Yes, Sa uh, Sam could have picked up the slack, but you know what? There is no way that this movie would have been even as good as it was without the uh, Queen, uh, without Queen Ravana. Sorry. You really, Charlay's deserved every appreciation of that movie. And that's where the power did come in. That's what did draw me into the movie, at least for those parts. That was the highlight of the movie, is where she comes in. And initially, the movie starts off as Snow White as a younger girl. Now, they do explain the whole situation where they did not in the Disney movie, where the king was married to Snow White's mother, and Snow White's mother passes away. Very tragic. Everyone was sad, including the king. But he is challenged into war and defeats the army, where he unleashes the captive, who he thought was an average woman. And he falls in love with her. Turns out to be Queen Ravana. And the queen, the first night, kills the king and poisons him. Well, poisons him and kills the king. And takes over the castle in a mad stampede with her brother. The, the, at least the backboard of this, or backbone of this movie. Sam Sproul, who played Finn. And I honestly say he deserves more recognition than Kristen Stewart in this movie. Yes, he played a very simple character, but you know what? Even the simple characters need that definition, and he did that well. He did that incredibly well. From his fear, to his anger, to his frustration, his build, his destruction, everything was perfect. Was it worth a not an uh, Emmy? No. But was it good acting? Was it great acting? I would bet my money on it. And I can honestly say with a straight face that he should be in more, more movies today. Because of the... Uh, I can't even speak because of how well he did. But because of his portrayal in this movie, I believe he earns some more movies. In his line, at least. So, we will be wrapping this up now with how it ends. And yes, if you've seen the children's movie, then you know the queen dies. I'm not going to tell you how she dies, but you can always watch the movie for yourself and see it. My initial take on this movie, overall, it wasn't a bad movie. As much as I could complain about this movie from night to uh, day to night, morning to evening, back and forth... Did it have the elements it needed to to at least be a movie? Yes, it did. Was it worthwhile? Debatable. But was it a, at least a movie that can build on something? Or did it have the structure it needed? Yes. And that's what movies need at least, is that structure. I will be... If anything, bashing more movies while critiquing the good ones from the bad ones. But people need to know nowadays what is good and what is bad. I may not be the perfect person, but I will at least give my opinion on it. So, my overall opinion? There you go. That's all I have to say. Now... You may like it, you may not like it, but this is what I took from the movie. And I hope if you do see this movie that you take something differently, but that's what I felt when I watched this movie. Now, 
take the good with the bad and I hope you really took something from this review and need I say more this is Gene Starwin reviewing Snow White and the Huntsman signing out